Hey, have you been the victim of subprime lending specifically within the auto industry? Well, I have some breaking news for you today because we're going to be talking about the most recent legal lawsuit that has been issued against Credit Acceptance Corporation because of their malpractices in the auto lending industry, specifically giving and lending to those who they know won't be able to really pay off those loans. So if you ready to get into this episode, let's go. The Debt Demolisher TV with Sophia Meloni. Hi everyone, it's Sophia Meloni, The Debt Demolisher, here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to help you manage your financial baggage the right way. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about some breaking news behind one of the largest subprime auto loan lenders, which is Credit Acceptance Corporation. If you guys have not known, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has really been cracking down lately on those companies and lenders that are within the auto industry. And as a result of a lot of their efforts and the information that they have been sharing, They have actually joined forces with the state of New York's attorney general to file a lawsuit against Credit Acceptance Corporation. Many of you may not know who Credit Acceptance Corporation is, but some of you may. But for those of you who don't, Credit Acceptance Corporation is an auto finance company that provides auto loans and other related financial products specifically to those who have less than perfect credit. One of their slogans and the things that they drive their model off of is being able to be the credit acceptance program that gives enrolled car dealers the ability to say yes to every customer that they have, regardless of their credit history. Now, what can this trigger and what can this result into? Honestly, you guys, it can turn into greed. We all know that the car industry is one of the most manipulative industries in the world. And when it comes to auto loans, they can hike up the price like no other. And because there are so many times we as consumers, we may be desperate for a vehicle. We may be desperate to want to be able to show off for whatever reason. We want to be desperate to be able to get that thing that we need, that we are willing to put ourselves in detrimental financial situations just because we believe that we can afford the car loan that we're getting right now. So if you're wondering why the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the New York State Attorney General are going after Credit Acceptance Corporation with this lawsuit, here's why. All right, before I go into the allegations, I want to invite you to subscribe and hit the like button as you enter the room because your like and your subscribe will help get more viewers to see this video so that they can get this insight too. So hit the like, comment, subscribe, and let's get right back to it. So they're going after Credit Acceptance Corporation because they believe that they have been hiding auto loan costs to ultimately set their borrows up for failure. One of the things the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau indicated was that the Credit Acceptance Corporation has been misrepresenting the cost of credit and tricking its customers into high cost loans on used cars. So the car buying experience has been turning into a nightmare for so many borrowers who have gone through Credit Acceptances Corporation's program. So how is that so? Because those who typically get lending through credit acceptance, they end up facing unaffordable monthly payments. And not only that, their vehicle will end up getting repossessed. And then not only that, that vehicle that has been repossessed will now go into a debt collection lawsuit. One of the allegations that's inside of this lawsuit is that credit acceptance violated the state of New York's usury limits, as well as other consumer and investor protection laws. So the intention behind this lawsuit is to really put a stop on credit acceptances, illegal practices that they have been doing for over the years, and to reimburse those consumers or customers or borrowers that have been harmed during this process. The intention is to pay back those earnings that were wrongfully gained by this corporation. So this corporation has been around since 1972, and believe it or not, it is a part of the stock market. So if you've been watching the news, if you've been seeing any of the stock market alerts, Market Watch recently announced that credit acceptance's stock price actually plummeted. So according to one of the directors at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Credit Acceptance Corporation, i.e. CAC, obscured the true cost of its loans to car buyers, leading to severe financial distress for borrowers and subjecting them to aggressive debt collection tactics on loans. Its own systems predicted that borrowers cannot afford to repay. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the New York Attorney General seeks to halt the credit acceptances, illegal practices, and make consumers whole. 
Given that Credit Acceptance Corporation is an indirect auto lender that funds and services used car loans for people who have low credit scores, it is inevitable that they are one of the largest publicly traded auto lenders that is doing business with more than 12,000 affiliated used car dealers. Now, I'm pretty sure that you have been exposed to some sketchy used car dealers. And believe it or not, these used car dealers are using these subprime lenders to put borrowers in loans that they really cannot afford. So not only that they'll be paying on these loans with the available funds that they do have to pay on those car loans while they can, but the way that the agreement is set up, the borrower is intended to default. That is so sad. According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, consumers obtain more than $4.9 billion in credit acceptance finance loans. So what that means is people who were interested in purchasing a used car and had less than perfect credit, more than likely those car dealers were pushing the credit acceptances auto loan program so that way they could jack them up with these high interest rates and set the borrowers up for failure. So what are the allegations that are inside of this lawsuit? We're going to talk about a couple of them. So let me show you. According to the allegations, Credit Acceptance Corporation has been hiding the true cost of its credit. Why is this? Because they have been entering into agreements with consumers that will pay on average 22% APR. The true cost of the credit offered is far more higher than what the borrowers are actually told. This is because the credit acceptances business model pushes dealers to manipulate the prices of vehicles sold to credit acceptance borrowers based on a borrower's projected performance. So what does this mean? They hike up the price of the vehicle so that way the borrower will end up paying more for it at that higher interest rate. So this increases the principal balance of the loans. And as a result of that, they're hiding the true cost of the credit because of the inflated principal balances or the inflated principal price on those loans, which will be the price of the car. So because of this, credit acceptance has been evading the state's cap interest rate, which is 22%, so that they can be able to get a higher interest rate on that loan. And this creates deceptive practices because the prices are inflated because they want to be able to receive and earn more interest over the loan. This is not allowing the consumer or the borrower to make a better informed decision because they're really not giving them the true price. Whoop. Now, I know you are enjoying all of this wisdom and all of this insight. So why haven't you hit the like button? And better yet, why haven't you subscribed? If you have not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe to the Death Demolisher TV so that we can continue to keep bringing you gems and juices and all of the nuggets that you need because these gems will help position your financial pockets for increase, and I mean steady increase. So continue to support the channel by hitting the like button and subscribe. So what's the next allegation? The next allegation is that credit acceptance has been setting their borrowers up to fail because they have been putting their own profits before the consumer's best interest. So what they're saying is that almost four out of 10 loans, credit acceptance predicted that it would not be able to collect the full amount financed by the loan. So credit acceptance profits even when borrowers are unable to pay their loans in full because they end up using aggressive debt collection methods. And these aggressive debt collection methods will ultimately result in late fees, repossessions, auctions, post-repossession collection efforts, lawsuits, and not only that, their credit scores being ruined. The next allegation that's being stated is that credit acceptance has been closing their eyes to practices that harmed consumers. So the company created financial incentives for the car dealers, which are the used car dealers, to add extra products to loans and then shrug off whether customers were misled into thinking that those add-on products were actually required for the vehicle. The shocking piece that I really want to emphasize is that add-on products made up $250 million in revenue in 2020 alone just for credit acceptance. So think about the last time you purchased a vehicle. Think about the last time that you actually sat at a dealership table. What were the things that they were trying to add on? What were the things that they were trying to get you to include as a part of your purchase? 
think of those things because the more you add on, the more the price tag goes up and the more that the price tag goes up, that's the more interest that you're going to end up paying. Now, let me school you to some law knowledge. Now, I am not a lawyer and I am not an attorney by any means, but I will say that all of the laws and legislation and regulations that have been established in this country is available at your fingertips. All you have to do is Google. But you may be wondering, how is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau able to partner with the attorney general's office and file this lawsuit? Why? because the Consumer Financial Protection Act gives the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau the authority, the ability, the initiative, the wherewithal to pursue actions where companies are not upholding the law. And as a result, they are violating consumer protection rights. So if there are any companies that engage in unfair practices, deceptive or manipulative acts, they can get sanctioned. So because this lawsuit has been filed, they now have to go to court. This company now has to get their legal team together and they have to prove that they didn't do what is being alleged against them. Now, let me tell you, they've already failed at a previous allegation whereby they were sanctioned in order to pay $27 million as a result of a lawsuit filed by the state of Massachusetts. Now, the interesting piece is I was able to get my hands on a copy of the actual complaint that was filed by the state of New York and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and it's pretty juicy. So according to the complaint, it states that Credit Acceptance Corporation makes loans to millions of financially vulnerable consumers trying to buy a used vehicle. Credit Acceptance Corporation's loans carry exorbitant interest rates and are loaded with expensive add-on products and saddle borrowers with debts that even Credit Acceptance Corporation believes that borrowers cannot afford to repay in full. Credit Acceptance Corporation aggressively markets itself as an alternative for consumers with limited credit options and touts its loans as a way for consumers to build their credit and gain financial freedom. But Credit Acceptance Corporation is often setting their consumers up to fail. So the interest rates that Credit Acceptance Corporation affiliated dealers have to charge on its loans is typically anywhere between 22%, which is at or near the maximum rate that's allowed in many states. But those extremely high interest rates often don't reflect how much consumers are really paying for a CAC loan. The complaint continues by saying Credit Acceptance Corporation has created a complex algorithm to predict how much it will collect from consumers over the life of a loan, not just from consumers monthly, but also from potential collection efforts, repossessions, auctions, and deficiency judgments if the consumer defaults. Credit Acceptance Corporation scores each loan using this algorithm, but it does not use its score to determine whether to offer a loan to the consumer, whether the consumer can afford the loan, or what interest rates to offer. Credit Acceptance Corporation's lending model is indifferent as to a customer's ability to repay loans in full. Credit Acceptance Corporation instead uses this score to predict how much money it expects to collect on the loan. Now let's pause for a second and internalize this. Many of you may not be aware of how the car lending industry works, but by us going through this complaint, by us reading this information, it is allowing us to learn what we're getting ourselves into when we go to these used car lots, especially when we're going to these used car lots to borrow instead of paying in cash. Now, there is no judgment inside of this conversation. It's only awareness building inside of this conversation because we need to be able to put ourselves in the shoes so that we can really understand what's happening behind the scenes that we may not be privy to. So when you're looking at deciding whether to purchase a car, whether to get a used car, and you're going to these lenders or you're going to these lots because you know that you may not have the perfect score yet, because you know that you have less than perfect credit, please be patient with yourself. Please don't force it because in the end, it's going to cost you a whole lot more and you're going to be unaware of that until you get to the point where you may not be able to afford it. And then these collection efforts will then have to take place. So be patient with yourself in whatever thing that you're trying to purchase and make sure that you're paying attention to the terms and extrapolating how much it's really going to cost you. 
Now let's continue. Credit Acceptance Corporation then uses the projected collections to decide how much to pay its dealers. So Credit Acceptance Corporation pays dealers less for loans with lower scores because they are less riskier. And then Credit Acceptance Corporation predicts it will collect less. Because they predict that they will collect less, they set the interest rate for the loan and the interest rate does not change based on the borrower's risk. Credit Acceptance Corporation's lending model incentivizes dealers to sell cars at inflated prices, which increases the amount Credit Acceptance Corporation pays that dealer. So what does this mean? This means that the principal amount in tax loans are often artificially inflated and far exceed the amount that CAC expects to collect on the loan or has paid to its dealers. And it's because CAC has shifted the cost of the credit into the principal amount instead of on the interest rate, consumers do not know how they are paying these hidden fees or the hidden cost of credit to finance their vehicles. Ooh. Ooh. I need you to pick up what we are dropping. Ooh. Ooh. I need you to pick up what we are reading. I need you to get these nuggets on today so that you do not get bamboozled in the future. Because the true cost of getting credit from Credit Acceptance Corporation is way higher than what is disclosed in their loan agreements. And what they have come to determine is that many of their loans far exceed the state's limitation usury caps. Now, what is usury? The definition of usury is essentially the illegal action or practice of lending money at unreasonable high rates of interest. So what CAC is doing in cahoots with these used car dealers, they are not allowing that higher interest rate to be visible because now they've incorporated it into the price of the car. So there is so much included inside of this complaint. And you all, I just want to share how important it is for us to take time to look at the things that we are interested in getting into before we get into it. I know sometimes we can be in a state where we feel like we need this car or we need this loan or we need this house or we need this credit card. But I want us to just take a moment to not be pressured during desperate times. Because when we make decisions out of haste, oftentimes we're not allowing ourselves the space to educate ourselves long enough not to get caught up in a situation where we're locked in to something that we have to pay for that we'll end up defaulting on when in the end of the day, you could have kept all of that money that you were paying on those loans if you were gonna have to default on it anyway. So don't allow yourself to get caught up into the trap of being manipulated by these financial products. Yes, we have financial lending products that are designed to be able to support us and get the things that we need, but we do want to be mindful of what we're purchasing, when we're purchasing it, and at what rate that we are. So when we're looking at agreements, I know it can be lengthy documents. I know it can be a lot, but it's really important to take the time to see, does this actually make sense? One of the things that you can do before you actually go into buying a car is looking at what the value of that car is today. If you're not familiar with the site, kellybluebook.com, that's one of the sites that you really want to go to to find out what is the going rate of a car right now, specifically the model that you want. So if you go to kellybluebook.com, you put in the model, you put in the make, you put in the year that you want, it'll spit out the average market price for that vehicle. So if you can take that and you can go to a dealer and you can compare to say, wait, they're selling it for this, but according to Kelly Blue Book, they're saying that it's no more than this. Why am I paying this excess? So this can help you with your differences. This can help you with your analytical approach. This can help you with your decision-making to decide whether or not if you wanna go that route. I know sometimes we may feel like we need something in the moment, but you never know. Just by you pacing yourself and you doing your due diligence and researching, you could find another alternative that may save you thousands, and I mean thousands of dollars. So as a means to create more convenience for you, 
I'm going to leave some of the links to the images that were shared down in the DDTV toolbox. So if you check in the description as well as the pinned comments, you'll be able to expand that and grab the link so that you can read the rest for yourself. There was so much informative information inside of not only the complaint, but also on the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's website. So please make sure that you check out that latest newsroom so that way you can fact check and verify the things that I highlighted and covered during this video. But most importantly, so that you can begin to build your arsony of financial literacy literacy. Because yes, I'm here to summarize this information, but of course, I need you to verify. One thing that I've learned when it comes to auditing that you could always trust, but you got to verify. So I appreciate the fact that you trust me, but let's make sure that you verify and you do your due diligence. So check down in the description box as well as in the pinned comments. So that way you can get to the DDTV toolbox and check out the references and the links. And I want to remind you, if you have not liked and if you have not subscribed on the way in, make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you like and make sure that you comment on the way out. Remember, your financial prosperity awaits you, and so does your financial sanity. You already know what I'm going to tell you to do, and that's what? Get to work. All right, guys. Bye. Woo. TV with Sophia Meloni, the Debt Demolisher TV with Sophia.